Hello everyone, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to join ICAX Talks. Uh, we are so proud of uh, our ICAX Talks, you know, uh, this week we already turned to 24th week of ICAX Talks. It's a lot of things happening and there are one new things I have to, you know, tell everyone this very good news. As uh, today, we finish this ICAX Talks free MOOC. Yeah, we got the first 21 speakers, videos, and all materials. We uh, re-edit and uh, modify it and make this as a free MOOC to put online. So all the students in different universities, you can choose this free uh, MOOC as was online, everything online is totally free. So yeah, if you are in the uh, mainland China or even not in mainland China, you also can access this, you know, uh, uh, website and uh, to choose this book. So there are a lot of things to share with you. This was one step forward to get I can add talks to go to many, many different campus university and get many students can learn from that. So this new thing is happening now. So please join if you miss the you know first of twenty one speakers. It's time for you to uh, add uh, you know listen to all these talks and get some information and learn from them. So this was a free book for I can add the talks. Uh, so time fly. As I said that already five months was flew away. So we got many speakers on that. This was our September, you know, speakers. Actually I post this and the first week of our, our September speakers. So I say okay, that's still long way. But today is already the last week for you know September, you know, speakers. And uh, if you want to follow us, please, you know, follow us on Twitter or on YouTube, get the video replay. Or you, or you go to I can add talk the website to you know assist to all these previous talk the ongoing information they're all online so uh, please stay with us by all these you know internet uh, apps and different things and uh, today we're going to have two speakers one is Yan Li my colleague in Peking University uh, she is uh, a very very famous in the nano materials and the fabrications of this part and another was Professor Jin Song was from US University of Wisconsin and medicine uh, he is also you know one alumni from PKU so yeah today we are so glad to have two PKU alumni here and uh, we have our guest host is Jen Liu was from uh, Nanyang University of Technology uh, everyone heard his talk you know a few weeks ago it's also in September he taught us a lot of uh, new materials for 2D material and now today we well, are great to have him to be our guest host and uh, I hope we can get more discussions on all these uh, topics. So with our first ado, we have uh, get our first uh, speaker, Professor Yan Li, on the stage. Professor Yan Li is in Peking University in Chemistry School, and today she is going to talk to us about structure control the growth of a single wall uh, carbon nanotube. Uh, carbon nanotube is very popular topics and uh, Yan is uh, one of the world leading researchers in this field and uh, is a very good uh, speakers, teachers and uh, everyone of theater, you know, um, performance today. Okay, Professor Yan, it's your time. Stage is yours. The word is yours, please. Okay, thank you. Um, many thanks to Alice. I think it's a uh, really great uh, to organize such a such a uh, amazing uh, talk series. Mm, so it's a great honor for, for me to share uh, my recent research with uh, friends all over the world. It's really a big stage. It's a it's a virtual, but it's really big. Uh, um, so thanks, uh, for, thanks, uh, Alice, for you uh, to offer us such a good uh, opportunity. So today, the, to the topic of my, my talk will be structure control growth of single world carbon nanotubes. Um, first, I would like to uh, make a very a brief introduction about my research group. Um, my research group uh, mainly focused on the uh, research of carbon nanotubes. Um, we put a lot of efforts on the preparation, including synthesis and sorting of the carbon nanotubes. And also, let me uh, choose a, let me find, uh, find this. 
Okay, I will got this leader point is better. Then uh, we also uh, working to uh, develop work to develop some uh, uh, transition methods for uh, for the for the control synthesis. And also we are interested in uh, developing applications of uh, carbon nanotubes in energy flexible devices and other applications, uh, other fields. Uh, if you are interested in our research, welcome to join us as a postdoc or graduate students. Um, see, here is the, the, the outline of my talk today. Uh, it will include introduction, cat uh, catalyst design and stability, structure control growth of single work carbonyl tubes, and summary. Um, first, I would like to introduce the structure, property, and application of carbonyl tubes. Um, Carbon nanotubes uh, was uh, reported in uh, 1991. At that, at that time, uh, Dr. Ejima of NEC, when, while he was observing, uh, observe, uh, was observing uh, those products for this fullerene, he suddenly found this tubular uh, structure. And uh, then he immediately published that result. Uh, that was in 1991, uh, November. After his paper was published, this new material, uh, actually it's not really new because before uh, 1991, actually it was already reported in several uh, general papers. For example, in 1950s, uh, Soviet Union uh, researchers had uh, reported, and also in, 1990s, in 1973, another, uh, uh, another researcher in, in, in Japan, uh, Professor Endo also reported uh, the tubular structure of, ca of carbon uh, in general for crystal growth. Uh, but at that, at that time, people do not pay didn't pay attention to this material at all. But uh, while, but when uh, Ijima reported his, his uh, new observation in um, nature, it immediately caused great attention. And uh, the whole world, uh, the whole, the, the, and it caused a lot of uh, attention and many people began to move to this new field. Um, see, uh, after the, uh, almost 30 years, carbon nanotubes has already, uh, have already found uh, wide applications in the field of uh, aerospace, defense, healthcare, environmental, engineering, energy, manufacturing, particularly uh, in information technology. Carbon nanotubes can be used as a channel materials, uh, contacts, and also heat dissipation uh, materials. And also because it's a good mechanical property, it is a very good candidate material for flexible, variable, wearable devices. And also definitely it's a, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, uh, it's a very good candidate for the integrated circuits serving as a channel materials and also for the data storage. Um, as I just mentioned, the carbon, the carbon nanotubes really present outstanding properties. For example, um, it is very different from the normal nanomaterials. For carbon nanotube, every atoms in every atom uh, in, in the in, in this carbon nanotube molecule is uh, fully bonded. That means there is no dummy bonds. Uh, not the, for the normal uh, normal nanomaterials, for example, metallic or semiconducting uh, inorganic nanomaterials. Normally, uh, the uh, atoms on the on the on the on the surface is is not 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 fully bounded. So there is dummy bound. The surface, the interface is not clean at all. So carbon nanotubes, because there is no dummy bound, there is a very clean interface. Then it's a very good uh, very good model system. Uh, for physical studies. And also when carbon nanotubes uh, behave uh, like a, a semiconductor, it is a direct band gap semiconductor. This is different from the silicon uh, because of uh, it's a, a direct band gap semiconductor. That means not only it's electronic probably, but also um, it's a optical, uh, electro, uh, opto optical property and also opto electronic property can be used. And it's, mecha it's a mechanical property is really outstanding. It's the strongest fiber and it's, uh, it's, it's very tough. And also it uh, has a very high uh, carrier uh, mobility. Uh, 
it's um, it has uh, the the mobility of uh, ten to five times uh, for both uh, holes and electrons. This is unique because a uh, normal uh, semiconductors they normally have a quite um, quite okay uh, electron electron mobility, but their uh, hole mobility is normally uh, normally a very a very low. So this is uh, for for the for the for the carbon nanotubes because they have they, they present uh, both high mobility toward electrons and holes. They are in this sense they are really um, really ideal uh, materials uh, for uh, information science. Um, there is a uh, there is a review article uh, published in, in, in 2015 by uh, Dr. Franklin. Uh, at that mo that time he, he was working in IBM. Um, he co he uh, compared the the, uh, the the properties of the nanomaterials for transistors, both for high performance uh, transistors and also thin film transistors. Um, for both uh, devices. Uh, these carbon nanotubes are really super superior than all other nanomaterials. For example, graphene, a TMD, or exines. Uh, for example, for the high performance uh, 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 devices, uh, carbon nanotubes has the, uh, can be uh, can 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 can, uh, can have a very uh, very tiny uh, uh, channel lens and also very small. Um, Contact uh, contact lens and also the very low uh, driving uh, voltage. So this is actually for all these criteria, carbon nanotubes are always list on the top. For the uh, thin film, uh, thin film uh, transistors, though carbon nanotubes the mobility is not that as high as uh, exines, but because exines are not stable at all. So in this sense, carbon nanotubes are also the best material for TFTs. Um, some some uh, three years ago, uh, my colleague Professor Lian Maopeng in Ping University showed this uh, this uh, uh, devices FETs uh, made from carbon nanotubes really show show the uh, show outstanding uh, performance. It shows much lower driving voltage and a much lower power consumption than silicon devices when, when these devices go down to the sub 10 nanometer size. And also very importantly, it has balanced P and N type performance, exact, very really exactly uh, 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 paralleled, uh, balanced P and N type performance. This is a, this is a very good, uh, uh, Performance for this is very good for uh, normal CMOS uh, transistors. So in 2013, uh, a group in Stanford Computer Science, the first uh, reported this carbon nanotube computer. The, this um, this um, computer is fully made from uh, this carbon nanotubes, uh, serving as the uh, ch channel materials. Um, this this is when when this uh, report comes out, people are really were really excited. But uh, when you carefully check the performance of this um, computer, it's a kind of uh, disappointing because uh, the performance is not good at all. It's just comparable uh, with the uh, Intel 4004 released in 1971. So that's already 30 years, more than 30 years behind of the silicon, uh, silicon, uh, silicon uh, techniques. Recently, uh, the same author, Dr. Schulacher, who, who is now working in MIT as a faculty there, uh, reported this uh, uh, integrated circuits made from one, uh, 14,000 14, transistors. Uh, it's really a big progress, however, the performance of uh, this uh, integrated circuit is actually not uh, not uh, uh, satisfying at all. Um, this year, Professor Peng again um, reported some some exciting results. Uh, the um, developed way to uh, align the carbon nanotubes uh, dispersed uh, in, in in solution with this uh, well aligned condensed. Uh, 
carbon nanotube arrays, they, they were able to build carbon nanotube uh, uh, based uh, integral circuits, which, re which exhibited really uh, great performance. It's exceeding uh, all, all of uh, silicon CMOS uh, as integral circuits. This, this is a really exciting, ex very exciting uh, news to us. However, um, all these reports are of, uh, this, uh, of the carbon nanotube based uh, transistors do are uh, really exciting, but it's still far, far away from the real application. The, the very important thing actually is the material itself. Long time ago, there was 13 years ago in, 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 uh, in, the, in the year of 2007, uh, Dr. Avaris, which was the leader of the uh, carbon nanotube-based uh, uh, electronics group of IBM at that, at, that, at that moment, published a review article in uh, Nature Nanotechnology. Uh, it uh, introduced uh, the great future of carbon-based electronics uh, based on carbon nanotubes and graphene. Uh, however, at the end of that uh, review article, uh, he, he, he uh, discussed the main hurdle of this carbon, of this technique. He, he said, uh, what is the uh, bottleneck in development of nanotubes, graphene, and indeed in any high-end nanotechnology? The main hurdle is our current inability to produce large amounts of identical nanostructures. Nanotubes come in many sizes and structures, and the same is true uh, of many other nanostructures. So um, there is no reliable way to direct produce a single carbon nanotube type, such as will be needed in a, uh, in a large integral system. Okay, he pointed out that the difficulty in, make, in preparing carbon nanotubes with, own, with uh, one identical structure. What, that, what does it mean the uh, carbon nanotubes uh, with only one identical structure? Uh, let me show you uh, the structure of carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes can be seen as uh, rolling up uh, from, uh, from a, a piece of uh, graphene. However, the rolling, matter, the rolling matter can be very different. For example, uh, this tube, uh, the end part has the shape of a zigzag. Uh, this one has the shape of armchair. We used a group of index N and M to describe the structure of this carbon nanotubes. See how it works. Uh, this uh, I will show you uh, how to write a piece of a carbon uh, of a graphene to a 10 ton uh, carbon nanotube. He, see this is a piece of a graphene. We pick one point as a starting point, and because we are use we have m equals ten and a also equals ten here, then we count uh, ten uh, hexagons along the um, the basic vec basis, uh, basic vectors of the graphene direction. We have ten here. Then along the other uh, basic vector direction of graphene, we also count ten. We, we then add these two vectors together, we will have one vector called 10, 10 vector. Then using this as the margin part of the end of the carbon nanotube, we can roll up a nanotube for 10, 10. See, we just cut along this vector, then roll it up, we will get 10, 10 nanotube. Okay, now you understand how this NM uh, describes the structure of carbon nanotubes. See, uh, when the NM, uh, when we know the NM, uh, we, we, for given NM, the structure of the carbon nanotube is fully, uh, fully decided, fully determined. Uh, meantime, meanwhile, uh, the band structure also uh, fully uh, decided. See, the band structure of a carbon nanotube is really uh, fully depend, depend on the NM, NM index. Um, depending on the NM value, carbon nanotubes can be either metallic or semiconducting. 
And for the, even for the semiconducting energy tubes, their band gap is also fully decided by the NM index. Uh, when NM, uh, when, when NM uh, equal, the terminal tube, tube behaves like a metal. When N uh, minus M can be divided uh, by three, those tubes are semi-metallic. But uh, for our, all other tubes, they are semiconducting. Um, for those semiconducting nanotubes, their band gap is, uh, is uh, as I mentioned, is decided by NM. And normally when the nanotube, the diam when the diameter is, is a larger, the band gap is smaller. So for the synthesis of, uh, uh, for the preparation of uh, carbon nanotubes, it is uh, really uh, desirable to get carbon nanotubes with only one NM index. Um, there is there are many two way um, to um, produce this uh, carbon nanotubes with only one uh, chiral uh, chiral index. One is uh, direct synthesis. The other way is uh, is uh, is by by sorting of carbon nanotubes of uh, uh, with, uh, with, of, of, uh, with different uh, index uh, mixtures. See, for, the, for this uh, synthesis of uh, uh, chirality uh, specified carbon nanotubes uh, is uh, really the, the ultimate goal in our field. It's because it's, uh, uh, it's obvious of scientific importance and also uh, it's, uh, it's the application requirement. But it's it's not easy. I can show you uh, show you an example. For example, when you get a a, a pore of carbon nanotubes, a black pore of carbon nanotubes, actually just like get you like you get a pore of science. You think every green of the science is 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 science, right? But when you carefully check the morphology of the of this science, you you will find that they are really very different. They are very different, right? Uh, now, what you want is this sound is exactly the same morphology. It's, it's definitely not easy, right? It's really challenging. Um, for the synthesis, direct synthesis of a carbon nanotubes, we normally use chemical vapor deposition method. Uh, here, here is a, a it is shows the the operator of a chemical vapor deposition system. Uh, we normally uh, use uh, some uh, some carbon carbon source like a uh, uh, like a uh, uh, methane, ethanol, carbon monoxide, and also catalyst to catalyze the, the tube growth. And uh, people uh, normally believe um, the 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 catalyst are molten uh, are molten when, when when during the tube growth. Uh, so we call it uh, this tube growth process vapor liquid solid process. See, uh, there is uh, at the, this very high temperature, this metallic uh, catalyst is molten. And uh, those carbon feedstock uh, are decomposed uh, when they uh, approach to the surface of the, of the uh, catalyst. Uh, then uh, those carbon species will be dissolved into the molten catalyst. Then this is, so the, the, first, the first word, vapor means the carbon feedstock. The second word, liquid, means uh, this liquid catalyst with carbon uh, dissolved inside. Then when, when the carbon dissolved inside is uh, sat saturated, it will be, uh, crystal, uh, will be uh, crystallized outside to form this, solid carbon nanotubes. It's obvious this by this VLS mechanism. There is no way to control the structure of carbon nanotubes by the, by the, uh, the, the catalyst. Not to say uh, the, the structure, even the diameter actually is also not uh, controlled at all. Cannot be controlled at all. See? Um, then how can we uh, control uh, control the structure? So people began to think about solid state catalyst. That means uh, the, uh, we can choose some catalyst with a very high melting point. Then during the CVD process, they can maintain the solid 
uh, struct solid state structure. So because they maintain the crystallized structure, then they, they might be able to act as a template for the nanotube. Then therefore, the structure of the carbon nanotube might be controlled. See, um, there, there is a, quite a lot of people uh, tried this, uh, all, uh, both uh, theoretically and uh, experimentally. Here, I, I show you some uh, simulation results. This is a, a simulation uh, done by a group in uh, Cambridge. Um, they, uh, they put uh, the, the, the cap of different carbon nanotubes on, on the surface of, uh, of a solid nickel catalyst. They found the formation energy of different caps are very different. Then they assume this formation energy, uh, in the, the difference of this cap may cause uh, the, the nucleation difference of between uh, among the uh, among the uh, different uh, chiralities. Uh, eventually uh, maybe they can we, we can real, realize uh, the selective growth of carbon nanotubes with only one chirality. Um, people really did a lot of ex uh, experimental uh, trials uh, using this idea. For example, this is a, a very good, a very interesting one uh, among those examples. Um, this uh, this is a report from uh, from a Finland group. They used uh, this very well controlled cobalt catalyst to grow nanotubes in situ in the TEM. Then they can uh, they can uh, mirror the structure together with the chirality of uh, structure of the catalyst together with the chirality of a carbon nanotubes with TEM. But uh, what they realized, the selectivity they realized, it's so only 53 uh, per percentage. And the, the, the chirality uh, dominant is 65 tubes. Um, here we, uh, we, we just uh, summarize uh, all the, uh, the previous reports using this VSS uh, catalyst. Actually, the highest reported value is only 55%, uh, 54, 55% of 65 tubes. That was reported in 2000, uh, 2005, I think in general physical chemistry. That means uh, using the solid, normal solid state catalyst doesn't work at all. See, um, then um, this really uh, confused us for a long time. We we just feel feel exhausted. There is seems there is no way to realize uh, this this uh, carbon the the the, the, the chirality specified for carbon nanotubes at all. Uh, fortunately, uh, after some time, finally we began to 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 we began to have some some idea about uh, this uh, challenge. We learned we really learned from uh, this. Uh, uh, enzyme catalyzed reaction. And we know that enzyme catalyzed reaction is the um, most selective reaction in nature, right? See, we know, and we also uh, know that this, uh, this very good uh, uh, selection, selectivity comes from this one by one recognition between the catalyst, that is the enzyme and the reactant uh, that is called, uh, which is called substrate. Then we began to think about, to have the idea, if we, if we can find a catalyst with very special or unique uh, structure, there might be uh, the possibility to realize the one by one recognition between the catalyst structure and the structure of the nanotubes. Uh, then, the, 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 then we 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 feel okay. It's a uh, it's quite reasonable. Uh, it's a quite reasonable analysis. Let's see which or uh, what kind of uh, catalyst can, uh, can we might use. Um, because I I I work as a um, I work as a inorganic chemist. We re, we uh, we know some knowledge about these uh, alloys. We know this uh, very special kind of alloy is called uh, intermetallic compounds. Well, this intermetallic metallic compounds is different from the normal alloy because they have fixed composition and they have fixed uh, uh, structure. Uh, so 
uh, and because uh, it's a it's a it's a, a kind of alloy that means um, their arrangements of the of their of the atoms in the structure can be uh, very unique. Maybe we should be more completed, uh, more complex than the normal single uh, element metals. Um, so we so we we decided to choose uh, intermetallic compounds first. Then we also need a high melting point uh, metal, uh, intermetallic compounds because we hope they can maintain uh, their solid this structure um, while the while they are they they are they are they are, they are, they are catalyzing uh, the carbon nanotube growth. Then we began to to look. Uh, to look for uh, to to look uh, to check uh, this uh, uh, periodical table, uh, we we know that those um, those metals who uh, have a uh, high metal melting point are in this area, and uh, we also know in this area only uh, in this area only molybdenum and tungsten are very easy to form intermediate compounds, and because uh, molybdenum. Uh, can also catalyze the carbon nanotube growth. We 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 know that molybdenum based intermediate compounds are not good uh, selection. Uh, then uh, because if we have uh, have two elements, both for example molybdenum together with iron, iron or together with uh, cobalt, the both can catalyze. The growth of single one nanotubes, then the we can, it's not easy for us to synthesize a pure uh, catalyst of uh, intermetallic compounds. So finally, uh, we uh, focus on this tungsten. Uh, tungsten cannot catalyze uh, the growth of single or carbon nanotubes. Therefore, we can use extra amount of tungsten together with a uh, cobalt to form this uh, tungsten cobalt. Intermetallic compounds, uh, then we can consume all the cobalt. Uh, there is because there is no cobalt left. And then it's okay for for uh, for the selective growth of uh, carbon nanotubes. Okay, we do a time simulation to show our idea. For this normal uh, cobalt catalyst, you see if we choose uh, carbon nanotubes with a different chirality, uh, with different chirality but uh, a similar a similar diameter. All the six different kind of uh, tubes show very similar uh, structural match, structure match to this uh, cobalt. Seems are uh, very similar, but for this co cobalt seven tungsten six uh, metal uh, intermediate compounds, see very different. Uh, for the six different kind of uh, nanotubes, only these twelve six tubes show perfect, perfect. Geometrical match. All other mm, tubes do not match the the, this, uh, the structure of the catalyst at all. We also uh, calculate uh, the uh, the this called matching energy uh, of the carbon nanotubes with the uh, with the uh, with the catalyst. And this pink uh, columns are uh, correspond uh, corresponding to the uh, cobalt catalyst. See. All this uh, matching energy, they are really similar, very similar. Uh, but uh, for this um, cobalt, uh, cobalt seven tungsten six uh, uh, catalyst, the differentiation is huge. Okay, this simulation show uh, conceptually, conceptually that uh, our our catalyst may work for the uh, selective growth of single wall carbon nanotubes with only one chirality. Okay, the, the next uh, problem is the preparation of a uh, catalyst. We know that tungsten based uh, intermetallic compounds are not easy to, pre to prepare. People normally uh, use arc discharge uh, uh, to prepare at around, uh, ab above 3000 degrees centigrade. This is, a, this is a too high temperature. At that, the, at that temperature, is no way to control the size of the catalyst. And also because we will use silicon wafer uh, as the substrate uh, to um, uh, perform the CVD process, silicon wafer definitely cannot stand the temperature of beyond 3000. 
that means we, we, we definitely need to develop a new way to synthesize uh, this uh, intermediate compounds. Uh, Again, uh, we use some, uh, we, we use some uh, very, uh, uh, very, I think it's a very clever method. Uh, we choose this polyexid clusters containing both tungsten, tungsten and also uh, cobalt uh, as the precursor. In this cluster, um, because tungsten and cobalt are well mixed and there is much more tungsten uh, than cobalt, uh, in this in this molecule, and also the size of this precursor is nanoscale around one to two nanometers. That means uh, that that uh, that indicates we can we can prepare uh, this uh, um, intermetallic compounds at much lower temperature. Uh, actually, we realized uh, the preparation as at the temperature around one thousand degrees centigrade. This is the catalyst uh, we produced. Uh, the HDF STM image clearly shows its structure. It's a uh, uh, it's a typical uh, typical uh, typical structure of a uh, inter 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 metallic compounds. Then, uh, because we we want to use such kind of a uh, catalyst to at a temperature. Uh, beyond uh, 800 degree. So we need to make sure those catalysts are stable at a, at a high temperature. Then we do in situ HRTM analysis of a catalyst at vacuum first. You see at 900 degree, the catalyst can fully maintain their crystallized structure. They do not melt at all. And also, we used we we also um, uh, measure the yields of this uh, catalyst. You see, in, we 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 choose uh, the spot in, in, at the center of the catalyst, and also at the margin part, surface part of the catalyst. It's obvious that uh, inside or outside, this yield spectra are exactly the same, are identical. The, and also very different from this uh, uh, cobalt silicon. Uh, and we, we, we need to check uh, to check uh, the cobalt silicon because here we use uh, silicon uh, nitride as the as the as the film to support uh, this catalyst for TEM study. See, um, they are really uh, uh, chemically stable at this uh, temperature. Uh, when the, when even for the very tiny uh, nanoparticles of uh, cobalt-7 tungsten-6, for example, these catalysts are only with the size of uh, one to two nanometers. At much higher temperature, 1,100 degrees centigrade, they can still maintain their crystallized structure. Okay, it seems at vacuum, eh? So it seems it's really frozen. Okay, um, for um, at, at a vacuum, the car, this uh, catalyst uh, is stable, but see how it uh, how it works um, at when, at a carbon feeding condition. Uh, th this is a, a phase diagram of a carbon cobalt and tungsten. It's obvious there's many different kinds of carbides in this uh, in this phase diagram. So people definitely will dot uh, when when there is carbon feeding in, in your system, uh, will your cobalt tungsten uh, intermediate compounds chemically stable? Then we need to uh, to confirm this, to verify this. If they are not chemically stable, they cannot serve as a uh, structure template for the formation of carbon nanotubes. Uh, first, we checked this constant. When we put the tungsten nanoparticle on a on a carbon film and heat at heat uh, in, in vacuum in 1,100 degree, this tungsten immediately transformed into a, a transformed into a tungsten carbide. Um, and uh, we then we checked a uh, cobalt for the uh, for this uh, metallic metallic cobalt. Um, we 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 uh, put some methane, a little bit of methane, uh, in the environment using an ETM, 
item. And we found this, this, cup, this cobalt is partially molten at the surface, partially molten. And some of this molten, uh, molten cobalt is gone, is evaporated. And we do this uh, uh, Fourier transformation of, of, this, of this image and found there is co cobalt carbide formed uh, on the catalyst. So it seems uh, this cobalt is not stable at all uh, and carbon feeding and, uh, uh, and carbon feeding. Then how about our tungsten, co uh, tungsten cobalt catalyst? Here we use a uh, higher temperature uh, than cobalt and uh, higher carbon feeding than also the, than the, the, the cobalt experiment also doubled uh, the carbon feeding, uh, feeding, feeding um, pressure and also uh, use the temperature 300 higher than the cobalt case. Uh, and this higher uh, temperature and higher carbon feeding, it seems the catalyst is fully stable. It doesn't change, it didn't change at all. Seems uh, very stable, okay. And we carefully checked these atomic steps of the catalyst. Along with the time, they do not change at all. They do not change. They are very the, the, the even the even the surface the step the steps of the of this uh, cobalt tungsten is very uh, stable. We also measured the interplane distance in the in the in the in the central part and at at the uh, at the surface. It seems they are exactly the same. Yeah, for this catalyst, we carefully checked uh, the interplane distance from the center to the surface. See, this is the, uh, the, the interplane distance. They are very stable. There is, uh, th that means there is no carbon uh, uh, inclination from uh, 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 participation from the, from the surface till the, till the center. Um, because when we using uh, this item, we can only check uh, the catalyst one by one. We want to know uh, the general general situation of our catalyst during the CVD process. Then we build a facility uh, in the synchrotron, synchrotron in, in Shanghai. Um, here we put a, a, a CVD system in, uh, in this uh, uh, here. Then we can we can observe uh, we can we can observe the um, the growth process with this. Um, X-ray absorption spectroscopy. This is what we got. Uh, see, uh, this is a standard sample um, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a cobalt. And uh, seems uh, for, for our, our, our catalyst, along with the time, um, there is no change at all uh, in their uh, absorption, um, X-ray absorption spectra. It, uh, this this uh, uh, this spectra shows again on um, the our catalyst is very stable and carbon feeding. See, it's crazy. Okay, uh, we already we we already uh, proved that our catalysts are chemically uh, stable uh, and carbon feeding. Then we, we, we can try this catalyst for carbon nanotube growth. First, I, I would like to show you the, the selective growth of 12,6 nanotubes. Um, for this uh, selective growth, we rely on very much uh, this uh, uh, Raman spectra to characterize the, the, the chirality of our carbon nanotubes. Um, for this um, uh, vibration mode called radar RBM, uh, which shows uh, the uh, this um, breeze of the of the of the carbon nanotube along the diameter direction, and it's uh, it's it's obvious uh, that the uh, this the, the the frequency of this mode is determined by the diameter is really really is related to the diameter of the nanotubes. So we can we can uh, get uh, the the information of the uh, diameter of the nanotubes from this frequency of this RBM. And uh, uh, because uh, we use this called um, 
reso resonant Raman, uh, we, the uh, excitation wavelength of the laser um, matches uh, the band gap of the carbon nanotube. Because of this resonant effect, the uh, spectrum of, of, of a single nanotube will be detected. Then uh, when we get the spectrum of a nanotube, that means uh, the, uh, the uh, band gap is uh, similar to the uh, uh, excitation uh, laser. So uh, from this, uh, uh, this band gap information together with this, uh, this uh, diameter information, we can assign the chirality, the NM of the carbon nanotube. Um, see, uh, for this uh, normal carbon nanotube grown from uh, this cobalt catalyst, you can see RBMs everywhere. We, we used the six different wavelengths to check our sample. We can see RBMs everywhere. That means there is fully no selectivity at all. But um, when we uh, use this um, uh, cobalt, tons, cobalt 7 tungsten 6 to grow tubes. This is the result. We checked again uh, the, the sample with different uh, wavelengths. When we use 488, 514, 532, 785, and also 830, with these five uh, different uh, wavelengths, we only uh, obtain a few uh, spectra only when we use this 633 nanometer excitation, we got very focused uh, RBMs appearing, uh, appearing at 197 wave numbers. Eh, see what is, it is so slow. <laughs> Seems my computer is freezing, it's frozen. So yeah, your computer is breathing. Um, yeah, I think so. Maybe I need to restart. No, maybe. Uh, yeah, so you can reset if it didn't move in a few seconds. Okay, sorry for for the inconvenience. It's so, okay. So all the audience can take a break for three minutes. Three minutes maybe. <laughs> <Okay>. Sorry <laughs> for this. Okay, just <sighs> reset. Okay, yeah, we welcome all the questions. Maybe it's better to restart it so uh, no. yeah, yeah, you restart. You reset. So hello everyone, all the audience. So yeah, Professor Yan's computer has a little bit of trouble. So we need a few seconds to recover his uh, her computer. But during this part, I want to let everyone know that we we'll welcome your questions. So if you have any questions, please post in the Baidu chat room. So the chat room is okay for you post either in Chinese or in English, but we prefer in English. So you post your question there, then we can you know pick up and uh, we'll answer that during the you know question uh, time. Okay, yeah. So yeah, please uh, you prepare your questions.
because it's uh, too large, maybe. Okay, yeah, please continue. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, this um, this uh, is a video showing our measurement. See, this is uh, uh, the, the panorama of a sample. This shows every scan mapping process. Every scan, this is a spectrum for, it, for each scan. This is a collective uh, spectrum. It's obvious that this carbon nanotube, uh, the IBM, for this, for this carbon nanotube sample, all the IBMs very concentrate on this 197. And uh, uh, then uh, from this, this, uh, this cutover plot, we assigned the chirality of a tube is 12.6. Um, then uh, it's, it's, it seems uh, not so uh, accurate just by only uh, only by uh, this Raman spectrum. They, they, they have, they, then we also grow tubes uh, along uh, this across this silice to check the the uh, the chirality of the tube by electron diffraction. See this tube uh, show the R, the, the RBM to one thousand one hundred ninety seven. Um, then, but uh, and it's, uh, the 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 diffraction pattern is exactly the same as the simulation of 26 tubes. Then we confirmed the clarity of this, those tubes are really 26. Uh, next is a uh, whole, 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 whole uh, pure of is our sample. We developed different strategies to, to count uh, the, the abundance of, our of these 26 tubes. First, we use uh, this called IBM counting just uh, using this, uh, this Rama mapping to count the IBMs and uh, taking account all this static uh, parameters in the system, we finally find, find out the purity is around 93 uh, percentage. We also used a uh, collector. We, we also collected uh, 50, around 50 samples to do absorption. And from the absorption from this, uh, uh, this integrity area of the peaks of these 12 six tubes. Uh, we know uh, that the, the purity of the 12 six tubes is around 92.5. We use an, another method uh, combining EFM and Rama mapping. Using EFM mapping, we can, we can know the whole number of uh, carbon nanotubes. Using Rama mapping, we can know the number of uh, 12 six tubes. From this two value, we can calculate uh, the purity of the 12 six tubes it's 94.9. Anyway, from all, from all these three methods, we confirmed uh, our selectivity is quite high, is uh, beyond 92%. Then how, 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 how did our tube grow? grow? It, it, it really grew along uh, uh, the, the, the way we proposed. Then we checked the interface between the, the nanotube and the catalyst. This is uh, what we observed. The, this axis of this carbon nanotubes is perpendicular to this zero, zero, 12 plane, just like uh, what we simu simulate uh, previously. Um, it, uh, it, it really uh, grow in the manner what we proposed. We also do some in situ TM observation to see the nanotube grow from the catalyst. Again, we see this, uh, this uh, the very short nanotube uh, grow from the surface of this catalyst. And the axis of this tube is again in perpendicular to this 0, zero 12, uh, 12 uh, plane of this uh, catalyst. Uh, it, is, it seems it works very well for the 12, 6 tubes. How about uh, uh, other uh, chiralities? Then we tried uh, 16, 0 tubes. We found this 1, 1, 6 plane of our catalyst uh, matches the, 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 this end structure of 16 zero tubes. Then we, we prepared this catalyst and using this catalyst to grow tubes, we found in the, the Raman spectra, these, the, these tubes uh, have the RBM at 194 with numbers. They also show uh, this um, fluorescence uh, at, uh, at, 300, at, at 0 0.768 uh, EV. This almost tells us, or, or this almost tells us, this is a six in zero tube, six in zero tube. Uh, but we again used this uh, electron diffraction to uh, verify uh, the result and found, found it is really six in zero tubes. 
uh, for the 16 zero tubes, the selectivity is around 79.2%. Seems are uh, not as high as the 12 six tubes, but I tell you, it's, this is really uh, or, or already a very, uh, very, very good selectivity for 16 zero tubes because for this the, uh, for the 16 zero tubes, which is called zigzag kind of tubes, its chiral angle is zero. According to the, uh, the previous theoretical and experimental study, for the nanotubes with a chiral angle of zero, it's very difficult to, to, to grow. They are kinetically unfavorable uh, in the synthesis. Um, and there are uh, other simulations also show, yes, it's a very difficult to grow tubes of zigzag, zigzag, zigzag type. Uh, for this, uh, this uh, around 80% selectivity is already quite high. We uh, also found this one zero ten uh, plane of this uh, of this catalyst matches the structure of 14,4 nanotube. 14,4 nanotube. Then we, pro we, we then we prepared such catalyst and the grow tubes. Uh, this time we observed that the, this RBM uh, appear at 189. Uh, this is a fluorescence. Uh, the peak shows at 0 0.77 0 .77 EV. We also do uh, this single uh, single nanotube uh, absorption spectroscopy. Uh, it shows the absorption at 1.5, uh, 2.3. Actually, these three transition energy already matches this 14.4 nanotube very well. From or from this spectroscopic uh, data, we are also we, we are already very sure this tube uh, these tubes are, are fourteen four tubes. But again, we still use this uh, uh, this uh, electron diffraction to verify our our our, our, our judge and our judgment is really fourteen four tubes. Uh, for this fourteen four tubes, the selectivity is quite high. It's around ninety seven uh, percent percent. Uh, just by direct, uh, direct uh, synthesis. After further uh, purification, we can realize uh, the selectivity of uh, semiconductor nanotubes around 99.8%. Uh, because this 14,4 nanotube are uh, semiconductor nanotubes, so we can use these nanotubes uh, immediately to build these uh, FETs. See, these, all these FETs can be fully uh, turned off by this gate voltage, that means they are pure semiconducting. Until now, it seems we, I, I show you a quite good story, right? We started from this uh, um, polyexate clusters and using this uh, to uh, then prepare this nano crystal of a cobalt tungsten intermetallic compound with very unique uh, structure, then use it as a template to further grow nanotubes with only one single dominant chirality. I uh, seems it is a quite good story, but there must be uh, this is there is a bug. I think uh, um, Professor Jean, uh, who will talk later, now who is now li also listening uh, to my talk, already found there is a bug there. For the for this catalyst, because it's three, the, it, it has a three three D structure, that, right? And it, uh, the, the in, in its body there are many different crystal planes. How can it, or how can it works for the selective growth of only one kind of uh, carbon nanotubes? According to our own theory, each plane can uh, can facilitate facilitate one kind of carbon nanotubes, right? How can we overcome this uh, problem, right? There are definitely we can we can uh, we can. Um, uh, make some effort, efforts on the preparation of uh, a catalyst because this uh, constant cobalt metallic compounds uh, are very difficult to prepare. Uh, we prepare them at 1000 degree. That means they may be not very well crystallized. Then we can intentionally, um, we inten intentionally to make the the crystal, uh, the crystal plane, which we we want to well crystallize, are the planes uh, not that well they are crystallized. That's what uh, that's, that 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 may may work may work right. Then uh, because the, the different crystal plane 
have different uh, free energy and uh, different affinity to, uh, to uh, others, to the environment. So we can uh, manipulate this preparation condition uh, to manipulate the crystal uh, degree of different uh, planes. For example, uh, at 1,000 degree 50, uh, 1,050 degree centigrade, we, we use pure hydrogen to um, reduce our catalyst. Uh, we do not observe this one zero turn plane, but when we add some moisture into this hydrogen um, hydrogen gas, you can, we can see this very obvious one zero turn peak. So this catalyst can be used to, uh, for the synthesis of uh, 14 four tubes. Um, but that is definitely not enough. Uh, we still need to optimize these kinetic growth conditions. This uh, idea comes from uh, this idea comes from our previous uh, experience in the tube growth, and also there is report uh, from other group. This is a group. Uh, this is a report from uh, Professor J. Liu in Duke University in the United States. They, they found when they use a nickel catalyst with uh, multiple, uh, uh, with very broad size distribution, and they just uh, change, uh, changed the, uh, uh, the, this um, concentration of the carbon feeding gas. When they use higher carbon feeding, uh, feeding uh, condition, they get nanotubes, which larger diameter, uh, when, when, the, when the, the carbon feeding is lower, they obtained carbon nanotubes with smaller diameter. The explanation is under certain carbon feeding condition, only the, 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 cat, the catalyst with the right size can nucleate the uh, nucleate carbon nanotubes. When the, when the catalyst is too small, they are too active, then they will be poisoned. And uh, when they are too large, um, they are not active enough. So, that means the growth of the um, carbon nanotubes with, with 13, with, uh, 13 uh, size uh, also have their pre, uh, preferable um, carbon feeding condition. Then uh, we, 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 have, uh, we also have a lot of evidence to show this. For example, this is, uh, this is a sample I already showed you. Uh, this 12 six tubes grown at 1030 degrees. The, the catalyst is prepared, was prepared at 1,030 degree, and the growth at, is also performed at 1,030 degree. We know at 1,000 degree, this catalyst is not, was not very, very well crystallized. Then we, I, we designed such an experiment. We prepare the catalyst at the 1,000 degree, uh, 1,030 degree, then grow the tubes at 1,000 degree, at a lower temperature of 1,000 degree. We again observed uh, the selective growth of 12 six tubes. Um, but uh, when we prepare the catalyst at 1,000 degree and also grow the tubes at 1,000 degree, we didn't observe the selectivity at all. That, this experiment definitely show the importance of the crystal structure of the, uh, of the uh, catalyst. But when we compare this nanotube grown from the 1,030 uh, 30, uh, catalyst at 1,000 degree, and those tubes grown at 1,030 degree, we still find the selectivity at 1,030 is much higher. That means this uh, growth temperature uh, is very important uh, to, for, the, for, for the realization of uh, high selectivity. Uh, see, uh, even not only the temperature, if we uh, adjust the concentration or the, the pressure of the carbon stocks, we also can change the selectivity. When we have uh, a much higher carbon feeding, uh, carbon feeding, we get higher selectivity toward 12 six tubes. But for the 16 zero tube, it's totally different. We need a much lower carbon feeding condition. Because as I told you previously, uh, the 16 zero tube is kinetically unfavorable. Uh, so 
uh, we need to use much lower carbon feeding condition to suppress all uh, the formation of all other kind of nanotubes that to realize uh, the, pre the dominant uh, growth of 16 zero tubes. Okay. Uh, I almost finished. See, uh, this is our strategy. Uh, we, uh, we need to, uh, we, we need a, a very common, uh, we, we need a catalyst with very unique uh, structure. Uh, with it, uh, with it uh, special structure, we can, uh, we can uh, obviously reduce uh, the possible chiralities formed on this catalyst. Then by further uh, kinetically uh, control the growth condition, we can realize the pre, uh, the preference growth of only one kind of carbon nanotube. That's the digital idea. Okay, with this idea, we can now realize uh, the very high selectivity toward uh, one of the, toward a single pure, uh, correctly pure carbon nanotubes. However, it's still far away from our target of 99.99. Okay, I think uh, if you are interested in your in, in my in your your work, you you can you can refer to uh, the new review article we, we just published uh, in Chemical Review uh, this year. It's a uh, it's a uh, I think, I think it's a cover, uh, cover, this is a cover page of this, of this issue of the chemical review. We also just uh, published uh, uh, a book last year on the, on the property uh, of uh, carbon, property preparation and the prediction of carbon nanotubes. Uh, it, you can also get it from the, from the, from the electronic version from Springer. Okay, uh, I, I'd like to finish with this curve. This is the, this is a report. This is a review article published in Chemical Engineering News in 2015. It it uh, discussed this development of carbon nanotube research. So it grows to the to the peak time, also the dark time. But now, fortunately, now it's already it goes to the second uh, growth plateau, plateau. And when the uh, when the um define the, the the second growth plateau, the 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 um said the development of the techniques to grow carbon nanotubes with only one uh, one special structure is the uh, is the sign of this new uh, new 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 stage so we are very proud of this we select our, our work to be the representative work of this stage uh, with this i would like to thank all the uh, all the group members including um postdocs, graduate students, and many collabor collaborators all over the world, and also the funding support from Natural Science Foundation of China and the Ministry of Science and Technology of China. Uh, thank you all for your attention. Okay. Alice, I finished. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. really beautiful talk. Uh, there are a lot of questions waiting for you. Yeah, we... Uh got to the question part. Okay, I think the first question came out is for, yeah, a lot of people uh, at the first part, you know that a lot of people was really, really, yeah, concentrate on these CNG computer chips. Though it has the progress written, but still far away compared with the IC. Did you think the CNG computing uh, should follow exactly what IC did? Or is there any other possibilities? Um, uh, carbon, the, 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 um, the property of a carbon nanotubes are very different from the silicon. Um, so because uh, carbon nanotubes, uh, the, they are direct band gap uh, semiconductors. So there is a possibility to use this, uh, the opto electronic uh, property together. That means we can combine this optics and uh, uh, electronics together in the, in the, in the chip, on the chips. Uh, this is uh, definitely superior than the um, than the uh, silicon silicon uh, chips. So they they are, and also because uh, um, I think this um, on on current is much higher for carbon nanotube based based um, uh, devices. So they, we can also rely on different logics uh, in 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 the in the CMOS uh, system. 
Okay, very great. I think now, yeah, a lot of people was talking about this. I'm really looking forward to see something new. Yeah. So the next question is, uh, uh, in the early days of a carbon nanotube research, the late professor, you know, Rick Samari, sent many scientists uh, their single well carbon nanotube samples, claiming they were pure nanotubes, uh, which later turned out to be wrong. Yeah, in mm. retrospect, properly they are uh, enriched of uh, 10, 10, you know, tubules. Did you, uh, do we have some guess now what may be the reason for such a possible enrichment? <laughs> okay, um, carbon nanotubes, um, but this, this material, carbon nanotubes are really very complex because um, they have different uh, structure, not like other materials. Um, for even for the characterization, it's quite complex, very complicated actually. Now we, at that moment, I think people are not, uh, do not have enough, uh, uh, are not very familiar with this uh, characterization technique. They are not, uh, they, they are not uh, well characterized. Then they make some mis mistakes in assigning the characteristics. They are not, the, those the, those uh, ten, the, those nanotubes are they do do have different clarity. They are not exactly the same ten ten tubes. Uh, nowadays we all already um, have some techniques to get very pure uh, nanotubes of only one clarity. For example, using some sorting method, we can get ninety nine point nine nine um, purity. Uh, with those samples, there is a possibility we can. Assemble those uh, pure nanotubes together to form this uh, uh, crystal structure. That that is possible to realize uh, the, the the we can we can we can we can re re realize this crystallized structure of uh, nanotubes. That's possible now. Okay, that's great. Uh, actually, this question is to let everyone know in the audience uh, technology is step by step. Yeah, even the very famous professor can make some mistake at the very beginning before they didn't get to, you know, uh, so many kind of techniques and uh, so many understandings of that. So uh, research and science was step by step, go further and go to the truth. And yeah, uh, so, yeah we came to the next question is, uh, what is the most exciting physical phenomena of uh, pr property you think in the moral, you know, superlatives that make moral materials different from others? Okay, um, this moral, moral material, actually I'm not that familiar because uh, it's, a, it's, I think it's a not very, very uh, popular topic on 2D materials. For carbon nanotubes, um, because we are concentrating, we are concentrate, concentrating on single wall carbon nanotubes. We do not have another layer, so there is no more structure at all for in our system. Um, then, so maybe other 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 researchers may have you more uh, more informative uh, uh, answer to you later. I, I really I'm not uh, very familiar with this moral system. Okay, it's good. We go to the next. It's <laughs> exciting to see that the charity of a type of a single wall nano uh, carbon nanotube can be selected. However, for chair object, they can be left hand or right hand. Cause, mm -hmm. uh, could there be some way to perfect, you know, pr preferably growing left hand or you know right hand single wall nano carbon nanotube? Uh, yes, this is a very challenging question, a very good question. <laughs> yeah, um, nowadays the samples we got, though the chirality is almost pure, but the handedness, yeah, they do have different handedness, handedness uh, right handed together with uh, left handed. Mm, no people are already realize uh, the separation of uh, left hand and uh, right hand. Just by, se by separation, we can get pure handedness. Uh, if we try to uh, directly synthesize it, it's not that easy, but it's still possible. Uh, I'm thinking um, if we can, we can, we can well control uh, the structure of the catalyst. There is a possibility to get uh, to get uh, nanotubes with both chirality pure and the handedness pure together. That's possible, but it's very challenging. 
Okay, yeah, it is. Uh, my question maybe is uh, following this one. I see that you grow, uh, you know, very nice uh, the cabinet tubes by the catalyst. So how about it can be, you know, large area and how about universe, uh, uniformity about that? Oh uh, yes. Okay. Um, we are yeah. now working on this uh, on the growth of uh, carbon nanotubes on wafers, silicon wafers. We 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 are trying to get um carbon to pure carbon nanotubes uh uniformly distributed on all over the the wafer. Uh, we partially reach that goal now, but but the purity is not as high as this. Uh, uh, samples of a small small area, uh, but it's possible to realize the similar uh, selectivity uh, on the uh, on this on this wafer size substrate. Okay, so you mean the small area is uh, you know centimeter square or something? Uh, just the, uh, around the one centimeter square centimeter, yes. Uh, okay, yeah, that's pretty good too. Think about it, it's <laughs> nano. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the last question is interesting. I think, uh, is, uh, yeah, many, many people was uh, really, uh, uh, you know, curious about this. You are very successful in nano materials and sensors and application. Could you share some tips with the audience, especially students, early career researchers? Uh, how about to, how to identify the research topic and uh, execute the project from materials and so on? I think we can answer that and the panel discussion, right? Yes, 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 this is a very, very <laughs> yeah, good uh, Yeah, yeah, please think about discussion. that. I think let's, most let's of the audience that, 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 uh, really yeah. want to know that. Yes. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank as you. I can add, uh, you know, we uh, really appreciate your wonderful talk and uh, we deliver this uh, virtual, you know, electrical, you know, certification to you by your wonderful structure <laughs> control growth of a single nano uh, world a carbon nanotube, connect world and universe. Yeah, that's yours, yeah. Thank you so much, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will give really. to you, you know, when we met in campus, uh, uh, we are really close. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, now we go to the dialogue part for the panel discussion. So we welcome, uh, you know, uh, other two guests here and uh, Jin Song, Liu Zheng. Yeah, I think now we can, you know, uh, go back to the last questions. Yeah, as a superstar, right? Uh, <laughs> in the carbon nanotube area. So how you identify, you know, the topic that and can you give some comments to the young scientists? Yeah, it's um, it's I think it's it really depends on it really depends. Uh, many different people uh, got selected their uh, their 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 research topics just uh, by their own manner, by their own way. For me, I just occasionally uh, joined this field of carbon energy research. Really occasionally, I never planned to join, but but accidentally I just joined this field. I when I began to uh, work on this, I found this very uh, this topic this. The coming out of this really amazing material. So, in the the re, the so the the the, the jo to join this field is not my choice. I didn't I didn't select to join, but to stay in this uh, field is really my selection. Uh, it's, it's really selected by myself. Decided by myself. Uh, I th I th people, I think, uh, no, no, many audience know in the year of 2000, uh, 2004, a new carbon uh, material graphene uh, came to the stage, and uh, people, most people in this carbon nanotube field, they moved to the new field of graphene. I choose to stay uh, in this field. The the very uh, important reason is I know the most challenging topic and most important uh, research topic is this uh, structure uh, selective growth of carbon nanotubes. Um, I have some idea about how to realize this. Uh, if I uh, give up this old research, go to the new field of graphene, um, I think uh, it is not easy for other people to go on actually um, to get this experience. And even if I joined this uh, graphene field, I feel without me, no, and I think I think no any effect 
on this field with or without my joint, my joint, my joint. So, but if I stay in the carbon nanotube field, it, it's it's it may make some difference to the field. That's the reason I choose to stay. And though though at that time it's really hard, very hard for us, very tough, because um, it's um, in a in a in a, in, a, in a bottom of the of the of the of the condition, very difficult to, you know, to get a. Uh, um, found findings and also not easy to get or to make our paper published. Uh, we need to put more efforts to make our paper published than the hot uh, field. Fortunately, we finally uh, finally find a way to realize uh, the uh, selective growth of the single carbon nanotubes, and uh, we get recognized by by other people. Then it's uh, a lot of uh, a, a lot more easier now for us. <laughs> we already. That's really good. Time. Yeah, I like your answer because you know sometimes maybe it's not your purpose to choose some field, but once you did it, you love it, right? You yes. love it. Yeah, you're working on the problem. You're not just working follow you know the kind of like the trend the directions was moving on. You found the problem, you solve the problem, and then you got good result. I think that's. The very good comments and the suggestion to all the young scientists here. So sometimes you know you just you know come to a field, no matter you know you uh is your purpose or not, but you have to like yeah you know yeah pay your more attention on that to solve the real problem there. Then you become a star. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So Jin Song. Yeah. Uh Song. How about you? You uh join the field, you know, uh especially for many years, right? You so you look so young, but uh, you're really senior in this field. Are you purpose to join that? Uh, you choose that field, or the field choose you? Well, uh, I actually started nano only when I was a postdoc. So uh, if uh, people know me long enough, you might know that I was uh, working on classical solid state inorganic chemistry as a graduate student. Uh, in fact, you know, the language of intermetallics and the stuff like that is something I'm very comfortable with. Uh, so uh, to me, uh, you know, that was a very conventional and traditional field. Uh, still actually a lot of interesting challenges, but at the time I was contemplating uh, doing a postdoc, the uh, exciting development and the many new ideas, uh, you know, a lot of the that are coming out uh, in nanoscience really attract me. Right. So again, I think this is actually very similar to what the Professor uh, Lee was saying. Uh, you are excited by the new opportunity and new science there. Uh, if you actually find something truly exciting and you can use your creativity to actually apply to those problems to actually do something great, then you find excitement and fulfillment in it and you keep doing it. Right. Uh, and uh, I guess the second reason uh, you will see that a little bit in my talk uh, later is I was always fascinated by geometry, by shape, by topology. And I think you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, the shape and the dimensionality control in nanomaterial synthesis is just something speak to my uh, you know, uh, personal interest. Right? As a little boy, I was fascinated by shapes and stuff like that too. Right? So that's the other thing uh, you know, that I like to uh, you know, say about that. Right? So I think again, uh, you know, uh, uh, echoing what Professor Lee is saying, something might appear, this is actually not static, right? So something might appear very stable now, but if you actually are so passionate about it, you have your own creativity, you push it to the extreme, you actually uh, make a breakthrough, like what uh, you know, Professor Lee did, then you open up a whole other dimension uh, in that uh, what considered a fairly mature topic you know, in, in the new field. I guess nano are all new, but nano tube by now is con considered a little bit more mature. If you open up that new space, then of course you have a lot more problem to work on, right? So it's actually not a static uh, question to ask and it's up to you to define what exciting and new and all of us can do that, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, that's really, really great. You're born as a scientist, right? <laughs> when you are young, you already <laughs> love all this kind of, you know, uh, science and the technology things and give on that. So Zheng, yeah, uh, so Zheng Liu, that's your second time. Yeah, so last time we heard your wonderful talk. I think many people still, you know, yeah, love uh stick with your ideas. So what a tune did uh you know materials there? You give us the pictures. So uh, can you tell us why you joined that field and uh, you know how you feel like to go ahead? 
Uh, okay, uh, for me, uh, I think I joined this field also uh, by some chance, like uh, I, I, I mentioned last time, I, I, I was okay, I was working on the uh, cognitive actually, uh, so, but I, I, I did not that good, so by some chance I translated to graphene, so uh, I'm working from 1D material to, to, to 2D material, and uh, so well, begin with that, all my career I focus on the nanomaterial or the nanotechnologies. Uh, so this is by uh, opportunity driven the way for, for, for my research. But yeah, uh, I do have something to share uh, with you, especially with uh, the students uh, and also the early career uh, researchers. So what shall we do? What shall we do for the nano research, uh, the nanotechnology and nanomaterials? So, uh, so it, it's obviously the nanotechnology is not a subject like a mathematics, like a chemistry, like physics, right? Uh, it's, it's kind of a multidisciplinary subject. So, and uh, I think the another problem is uh, uh, this kind of topic, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite uh, overcrowded, okay? Which means there's so many people that are working on it. So before we jump into the nanotechnology field, I think we should ask ourselves some questions. For example, for example, how we can make sure we can do it better than others? And uh, do we have unique equipment that uh, we, we can do uh, some characterization that uh, reveal the unique property of the materials? And uh, do we have the top scientists that they can help us, they can get us, and that we can work with? As well as do we have some fantastic idea and do, 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 do we have patience to, to make it true? So, so ask uh, ourselves, these questions before we really want to do it, to, 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 to put our time on it. I think it deserves, even, even for my students, when they join my lab, I will allow a few with even a few months for them to dig, to dig something themselves, to find as much information about the areas of the 2D materials or the nanotechnologies. And I would like them to propose the project uh, themselves. Instead, I tell them to do something. Yeah, so this is uh, uh, my overall feeling about this and other technology and this how to do how, how can we do the research in this area? That's very, very nice. Uh, actually, I think you may met a lot of people, you know, uh, not working in uh, carbon nanotube, but the students sometimes came to you. Maybe the first question for the supervisor should be, okay, where can we use that? Where we already use that, yeah. Is this all this research, uh, you know, kind of can come to reality or something, yeah. I think now for many years because the carbon nanotube was came to the stage, like Yan said that, and at least since 1991, right? Yeah, already many many years come, uh, you know, gone. So yeah, a lot of people here, especially students. Yeah, they may always want to know the answers like that. Where is the real application, our killer application? Yeah, can we put the cabin cabinet chip there? So yeah, could you please give some comments on this? Uh yeah, cabin nanochips are really amazing material. Uh at this moment actually, I think most of our audience are using carbon nanotubes now. Um not those tubes, uh, not single one, I mean, this, the, not the normal um, multi world carbon nanotubes. Uh, in this lithium batteries in your phone, in your cell phone, there is a very small amount, I think less than 1% of uh, carbon nanotubes in this uh, conductive pit. The, it contains uh, this uh, very small amount of carbon nanotubes. Then the performance is uh, really improved very much with this small amount. And um, but that uh, we 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 definitely do not think that is a killer application of carbon nanotubes. Uh, people, I think there is a common sense about the application of carbon nanotubes really in this information science in this uh, computer uh, also. In my own, I in my own idea, I think uh, this uh, TFTs for this flexible TFTs can be one of the one of the most important application of carbon nanotubes, and also it can be can be uh, go to the real application very soon. 
because carbon nanotubes uh, do have very uh, good mechanical properties together with the very good uh, semiconducting properties. Then combining these two uh, good uh, properties of carbon nanotubes is a perfect candidate for the uh, flexible uh, for wear or wearable uh, devices. Yeah, agree with that. We're using carbon nanotube for our, you know, uh, energy harvest now. So, uh, mm. so yeah, you have a, uh, you know, a lot of new ideas, and then you uh, have some, uh, you know, special kind of, you know, uh, will <laughs> for these questions. I want to hear that. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, 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 obviously, uh, nanoscience, nanotechnology was considered brand new. Uh, I would say three decades ago or two decades ago. Uh, so there have been many years. And uh, I would say that uh, to some degree, uh, the fact that nano now is no longer very special uh, is actually in some sense uh, 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 the signs of the success, right? As you know, Professor Lee was saying, now nanotubes are not so unusual. You can buy them depending on the quality you want. You can buy them by the ton, you can buy them by the kilogram, you can buy them by the gram. And, you know, of course, the, the, the type that she makes are really exotic and very hard to make really well. Uh, but the fact that uh, these are actually becoming available and found in many, many different products, many, many different things that we take for granted is in fact a testament of the success of nanoscience and technology, right? So, uh, you know, to some degree, the question that nanoscientists are asking, controlling atoms, controlling matter at the atomic level is the kind of question chemists, physicists, material scientists ought to be asking at uh, you know, these days and age, right? If we are successful in what we set out to do, then this will become the tools that everybody will have access to. And then this will become no longer special, right? So, but that is, itself is actually uh, the, the sign of our success, right? So I think, you know, nowadays you look around in the physical science research, it's very hard to see someone who do not use something related to nano, right? <laughs> you know. So you have to work really hard, you know, to we actually all find the people from who nano. actually do not touch nano <laughs> at all, right? So, so that I think tells you how much progress we made, and uh, I don't view that as a bad thing. I view that as a positive thing. I think uh, if in another 20, 30 years nobody care this name nano, then I guess we're done, right? But we always have new challenge to work on. You know, the fact that this is a you know a, a, a fancy a moniker, you know, that actually will be gone, but. But the fact that you know it become a common thing we actually practice is actually a, a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, everything. So, John, yeah, what's your opinion on this? Uh, yeah, I, I just follow uh, Procter's uh, opinion uh, that uh, uh, I, I think. Uh, it, it doesn't make sense that we talk about and uh, we are doing nano. Uh, actually, we are doing something specific, specific right? uh, specific things, such as I'm working on 2D materials, I'm working on non, I'm working non materials. So none of the very uh, uh, general ideas, okay. So it's time to work on the specific items, the specific materials, and uh, we figure out uh, a way that we can make uh, the highest quality, a lot of areas. Isn't that what uh, we, what our research will do uh, in the future? For example, nanotubes, right? Uh, how can we make uh, the nanotube with uh, uh, semiconductor behavior or metallic behaviors? How can we realize the high purity uh, carbon nanotubes uh, as Professor Lee mentioned? So, and this is will be a correct way, a proper way that we're going move forward on, on this nanotechnology. Okay, fact, yeah, actually, yeah, just now I was thinking, don't maybe say that. Oh, okay, Alice, don't ask me this question. All people should move <laughs> to 2D material. <laughs> 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 because last week, you know, a uh, week ago, yeah, just gave a very nice talk on that. I think, that, yeah, everyone was looking for it. <laughs> uh, it, it's nice, just a joke. Okay. Yeah, I, let me answer you on uh, you, another question because we have a large audience here was the majority of the graduate students. So many, many of the students was really, you know, want to uh, chat or discuss with the supervisors. They want to meet the superstars of the scientists. So uh, they want to know, you know, how you pick up the students and how you train the students. 
because in your group, yeah, as you said, you have a you know many members there, right? Many students. So how you pick up that? So who can get in your group? And uh, you know, yeah, how you training them to be stars? Yeah. So yeah, please. Okay. Ah,、uh, thank you, Alice. Ah,、uh, I think first is the motivation. Ah,、uh, I choose the students.、Uh, I like students who are motivated to do research. Who love to do science? That is the most important.、Um, first thing is, I think, the motivation. Second, they can be, they are easier to collaborate, because nowadays all the research are really done by a group of people. Nothing can be done by only one people. So,、uh, easy to collaborate, to communicate is very important.、Um, see, when I, when I, in your, in your, in your、uh, daily、uh, study. I think I pay much attention to their creative、uh, thinking.、Um, in the your in your group meeting,、uh, when we we normally、uh, read a lot of uh, uh, we we also, we also discuss a lot about the、uh, uh, the papers published in, in the in the journals, newly published papers. Every time I really、uh, lead the students to criticize those papers, not to really find the, the merit, but also Always try to let them find the problem in, in, in it and how to make it better. That's the way to encourage them for a criticize、uh, kind of thinking and to、uh, to improve their creativity. That's、uh, very important. I think、uh, this is very important for the for the growing up of the young researchers,、okay. particularly for students in China. <laughs> <laughs> so now the question came to so so you take a Professor Yan Li's class right when you no, are under students. No 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 no. No no. Yeah.、Uh, so no, I want、yet. to know if you teach them you know for the creativity. <laughs> so get soon to grow up to be such a superstar in the science. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> please. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, my time in Peking, uh, actually, uh, was right before I think Professor Li started as a faculty there, right? I think we、hmm. just barely knew each other. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, in terms of the original question you posted,、uh, what type of student I'm looking for? I actually、uh, basically concurred with everything Professor Lee said.、Uh, almost actually, even the order is actually the same too, right? So I think uh, <laughs> uh, passion and motivation is very important, right?、Uh, so uh, you know, uh, 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 you want you know, uh, uh, if you are, I mean, no matter how smart you are, no matter. Uh, what kind of what kind of background you have? If you have intense passion for the topic, you're going to actually really work on it. You really think hard about it, you know,、uh, and then you know、uh, you make it happen, right? So the English expression for that is you got to have some bear,、uh, some fire in your belly, right? And that actually drive you、uh, to really, you know, uh, uh, you know, go into a topic and become an expert, and then、uh, really think hard about what can I do differently, what can I do new. And、uh, and and eventually you'll make some、uh, great progress, right? So that motivation is very important. So another way I like to say is a life without a passion is a life wasted. So、uh, you need to get passion for something.、Uh, and for some of the students, interestingly, in fact, I often、uh, when I go around to、uh, talk about grad school, I realize actually that I spend about thirty percent of time convincing them not to go to grad school.、Uh, and、uh, <laughs> the reason is because、uh, this is not the only passion you can have. You don't have to be working on science,、uh, science or engineering problems、uh, as, as a PhD student, you know, to be passionate. There are a lot of people who are passionate、uh, about business. A lot of people passionate about starting a company. People passionate about art. Go ahead and do it, right? So I think you know a part of what you need to do in college is to find your passion、uh, and get good at it, right? So the, the fortunate thing is actually that you actually can find something you're excited about that you are also good at, and that's really. You know what you need to figure out in college, which I, I understand probably there are a lot of college students in this audience, right? So I think that's I think one thing on the set, right? So、uh, I will just add one more thing to Professor Li said uh, about uh, you know、uh, graduate students.、Uh, I think the other thing I like to say sometimes is I want someone who is not afraid, okay? And 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 I think fundamentally、uh, why we do research is trying to do something new and different, something that nobody else have done, something nobody have understood. Now we understand, right? Yeah, and to do that, you cannot be afraid. You know, cannot be afraid to ask the most obvious, stupid question. Cannot be afraid to try something nobody else have tried, and you're going to try the first time. Cannot be afraid to do something nobody else in your group have done, and you're going to do it the first time. 
you know, and if uh, I always tell my students, if we as a group only do the things that we used to do, uh, then we can only do the same thing, right? If you can only do what I have done in the past as a graduate student, you will be just a smaller version of myself. Uh, and you need to be yourself. You need to do something different. You need to do something new that I could not do. That's actually why we became a better scientist. That's why we as a group continue to invent, invent ourselves and do something different uh, you know, in the science, right? So that I think uh, just uh, one more thing to add. Yeah, so okay. I believe uh, maybe I should give uh, uh, Jen some time and then I think actually Alice might want to talk a little bit about uh, my experience in Peking and uh, whatnot. And uh, I think we can come back to that a little bit later because I think I spent enough time this one already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So Jinso was really, yeah, really good point. I catch that you try match my I and X because X is unknown answers, you know, discovery. So everything you discover here. So I think for the students, especially for the Chinese students, that's very important. Always the students be shy. Always the students do want to encourage you to try you know, new things, to try other the, the things that someone never did. So they always be told, okay, you just follow some someone. You just follow someone. Do be number one to do something. Don't start out to be beaten. That's really bad, especially, you know, in the field for science and the research. Yeah, all these things, you have to be number one to try, right? No matter if the field are, you know, eventually success. So that's very important. So John, yeah. So sorry, I did trouble the, you know, yeah, the question passed to you. And uh, uh, have some comments here or adding something? Yeah, uh, uh, just uh, adding a, a few uh, points. Because uh, uh, Professor Lee and the team already mentioned the criteria how to find the students. Uh, I would like to share something about uh, how to train the students or uh, what the ideal students I, I can imagine in my mind, okay? So the, I think the most, most important thing uh, is the independent, independent thing, independent think that I, 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 care, uh, I most care about, it, okay? Instead of a particular or specific uh, project, I, I hope my students uh, can be in uh, independent thinkers, okay? There's some points uh, such as uh, that student can question everything. Okay, instead of following the paper or tell me, oh, this amazing paper, we'll follow it. He can, he can, he can discuss, he can find me discuss. I, I, I believe that part is, is not correct. I believe that part can be improved. So that, uh, this I like. And the secondly, uh, stop thinking emotionally. So, uh, for example, the paper got rejected, okay, after working for three years. <laughs> uh, the students can. Uh, uh, the, the paper being rejected by some uh, innocent okay comments. I think that the student can can find me can 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 argue to okay in a logic way, in a reasonable way. Okay, instead of say that's a bad uh, that's a bad reviews. I I, I I don't like him. Don't like her. And, uh, <laughs> that's not the end of the world, right? That's just a new start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the third third point, uh, I think uh, I hope the student can be surrounded by. Uh, some open-minded people so that they can touch different ideas, uh, can have different, uh, uh, can explore to different environment so that they can have some crazy ideas, I think, for himself and for the future. And finally, uh, do the research themselves. Never talk about it. Dirty the hand, just do it. Once you're starting with it, you will know some things, whether it's wrong or it's right or whether you deserve to do it. Okay, uh, that's really, really, really great panel discussion. I think, yeah, we give uh, deliver a lot of uh, messages to the audience. Yeah, now time is uh, over. We need to go to Song's talk. So you can, you know, yeah, deliver a talk and then add, in, you know, more ideas, more thoughts in your talk. Okay, yeah. So, John, now is your time to cheer Song's talk.